Honda Civic Hatchback Review Our Rating 4 Star The Honda Civic has morphed from a substandard family hatchback to a genuine class contender. 4 Good to drive, punchy turbocharged engines, practical touches. Against No diesel or hybrid yet, interior quality isn't as good as some rivals, high-speed refinement on larger wheels. The new Honda Civic betters its dreary but practical predecessor in every area. Despite not yet offering a diesel or a hybrid powertrain, the two small capacity petrol engines are efficient, powerful, and refined, while the all-new platform makes the Civic much sweeter to drive. It's not as beautifully built as a Volkswagen Golf nor is it as economical as the fuel-sipping Peugeot 308 nor as fun to drive as a Vauxhall Astra. But it's practical, desirable, and filled with kit allowing this new Brit-built hatchback to finally rival the best cars in its class. Our choice. Honda Civic 1.0129 PSI VTEC Turbo SR. The 10th generation Honda Civic has just launched in the UK. It's built at the brand Swindon factory in Wiltshire, which now stands proud as the global hub for the all-new five-door hatchback. Other markets get a choice of saloon and coupe variants, also built in Britain, but bosses have confirmed their intentions to ditch the more practical Civic Tourer estate from the lineup. Initially, only two engines are available in the new Honda Civic. The 129BHP 1.0 liter turbo offers punchy performance and decent fuel economy, while a more powerful 180BHP 4 cylinder 1.5 offers more power. There is no diesel engine for the time being, though a revised version of the 1.6 iDEC unit will launch towards the end of 2017. Theoretically, the new Civic is capable of hybridization, though there are no current plans for a plug-in. A Honda Civic Type R hot hatch with more than 300 bhp is on its way. Both the 1.0 liter and 1.5 come with a choice of manual and automatic gearboxes. The 6-speed manual offers a short, sharp shift, while the CVT Auto is the only option for those after a self-shifter. All cars are front-wheel drive. Sitting on an all-new platform, the new Civic has been tested here with European buyers in mind. There's loads of new tech, including multi-link rear suspension, making the latest hatchback better to drive than ever before. The design mimics the smaller Jazz and HRV models as well as the NSX hybrid supercar while the revised CRV due later in 2017 will complete the refreshed Honda range. As before, the Civic rivals stalwarts in the family hatchback class, such as the Volkswagen Golf, Vauxhall Astra, and Ford Focus. Our current class favorite is the Renault Megane, though updates to the seat Leon and Mazda 3, mean competition is tougher than ever. Engines, Performance, and Drive 4.1 Star There's no Civic Diesel or Civic Hybrid just yet, but the two petrol engines are punchy, economical and refined. By placing the 10th generation Honda Civic on an all-new platform, engineers have been able to completely revise the way the hatchback drives. Luckily, it's a big improvement on its predecessor feeling fun yet predictable on a range of roads. In all honesty, Honda could have revamped the Civic simply by fitting a new range of engines but the changes run deeper than that. Body control is very good, and while the steering isn't brimming with feel, there's enough feedback through the wheel to allow you to place the car with confidence. There's a new multi-link rear suspension setup, too. While the old car could be described as uncomfortable, the new one majors on long-distance refinement. We've yet to try the car on UK roads, but the rougher sections of our Spanish test route proved the Civic was more than capable of dealing with surprise potholes. It's smooth around town, too. Two petrol engines will be available from launch, with a frugal diesel and Type R hot hatch coming later. Both the three- and four-cylinder units are really quiet, and each can be paired with a six-speed manual or CVT automatic gearbox. Adaptive dampers feature on higher-spec cars, though in our experience the difference between the two driving modes is minimal. The suspension is ever so slightly firmer, 
but as the Civic is already decent to drive in the passive setup, we'd leave them as they are. Engines From launch, the Honda Civic is available with a choice of two, small capacity petrol engines, but a diesel will join the range later. The entry-level 1.0-liter three-cylinder turbo is our pick of the range, offering sprightly performance, low running costs and impressive long-distance refinement. It'll do 0 to 62 miles per hour in 10.9 seconds and hit a top speed of 126 miles per hour. Some buyers may mourn the death of Honda's famous naturally aspirated, high-revving VTEC engines, but in reality, the new turbocharged units are more responsive and easier to drive. There's very little lag, and with the torque appearing lower down the rev range, you've less need to keep changing gear. The more powerful 1.5 gets 180 bhp, but feels heavier and not all that much faster on the road. Honda claims 0 to 62 miles per hour in 8.4 seconds, though in many situations you'd be hard pushed to tell the two apart. It's not as economical either, returning only 48.7 mpg on the combined cycle. mpg, CO2 and running costs. 3.7 star. Not quite as frugal as its rivals, there's no diesel and no Honda Civic hybrid for the time being. While the 10th generation Honda Civic is still very new, the lack of diesel or hybrid engines means it can't compete with rivals when it comes to rock bottom running costs. That said, the two petrol engines offer low emissions and decent fuel economy, so neither should break the bank over 3 years or 36,000 miles. An entry-level 1.0-liter turbo with a 6-speed manual gearbox will do 58.9 mpg and emit 110g slash km of CO2, while the CVT Auto is slightly more frugal returning 60.1 mpg and 106g slash km. Watch out, though, as the larger wheels on SR models adversely affect CO2 emissions. Bizarrely, if you opt for the 1.5, the manual is more economical than the CVT Auto. The automatic car will do 46.3 mpg and emit 139g slash km of CO2, but the manual does 48.7 mpg and 133g slash km. In both cases, the less frugal car represents a 1% benefit in kind tax penalty for company car drivers. Insurance Groups the outgoing Honda Civic had insurance groups as low as Group 5, but due to all the added kit and new engines, the new car starts at Group 15 for the entry-level 1.0 SE. Luckily, upgrading to the better-equipped SR makes no difference to the Civic's rating in fact, even top-spec X models fall into the same category. Stepping from the three-cylinder to the more powerful 1.5 pushes the hatch into Group 22. As with the 1.0 liter, all cars fitted with the bigger engine fall into the same insurance bracket. A Volkswagen Golf starts from Group 7, while a Peugeot 308 goes from Group 12 upwards. Depreciation Residual values look good for the new Honda Civic, with an entry-level 1.0 liter SE expected to retain 44% of its value after 3 years or 36,000 miles. The more desirable SR holds on to 43%er while the top spec X boasts a 41%er rating. The faster 1.5 posts broadly similar numbers, though the range topping prestige model DIPs just below the 40%er barrier holding on to 39.57% of its value after 3 years. Almost all Vauxhall Astra models are expected to retain less than 40 percenter meaning the Civic is a better financial bet if you're planning to keep your car for an extended period of time. Interior, Design, and Technology 4 Star Perceived quality falls short of rivals like the VW Golf, but everything is well built, and there's loads of standard kit. Built and engineered in Europe, the new Civic was actually designed in Japan and from the outside the influences are clear. It pulls the hatchback in line with the newer Jazz and HRV models, as well as taking inspiration from the NSX supercar. Specifications for the 1.0 liter turbo model range from the entry-level homologation S-Spec, 
to the bigger selling SE, SR, and flagship X. For some unknown reason, Honda has chosen to label its 1.5-liter cars differently, with Sport, Sport Plus and Prestige trims. All cars get a squat, sporty stance, with a wide track and low roofline. SE cars come with fabric seats, but include climate control and automatic headlights as standard. A black grille, chrome trim for the windows and 16-inch wheels are also thrown in to decorate the exterior. SR versions add a leather steering wheel and gear knob, auto wipers, and a bigger screen with Garmin SAT NAV. Privacy glass and bigger 17-inch wheels are also included. Three-cylinder models in X-Spec add leather, a glass roof and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror. Sport models with the 1.5-liter engine get some racy details like the central exhausts and a more aggressive body kit, as well as LED headlights and a black grille. Sport is largely comparable with the smaller engine's SR spec, while Sport Plus mimics the X trim also adding wireless phone charging and a more powerful stereo. Flagship 1.5-liter Prestige cars come with heated rear seats and chrome door handles acting as a standalone spec for those buyers wanting absolutely every conceivable extra. Everything is logically laid out inside the Civic and there are plenty of practical touches to keep things neat and tidy. The side retracting parcel shelf is a revelation that'll surely be adopted by rival makers in the near future, while the handy wire clips ahead of the gear lever keep any unwanted cables in check. Honda's innovative Magic Seats no longer feature due to the more complicated rear suspension in this generation of Civic, but in reality that's unlikely to matter to many buyers. SAT NAV, Stereo and Infotainment While Honda will, in theory, offer you a Civic in basic S specification, few buyers are expected to plump for the miserly entry-level trim. For just £100 more, you can bag a well-equipped SE, which includes a 5-inch infotainment screen. That specification includes Bluetooth, but it's worth looking at the mid-spec SR if your budget will stretch. For the extra, you'll benefit with a larger screen, Garmin SAT NAV and improved smartphone connectivity courtesy of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We'd prefer a physical dial over the fiddly touch-sensitive volume controls, but it's far from a deal-breaker. A rear parking camera that operates through the central screen is also standard on SR cars. Practicality, comfort, and boot space. 4.5 Star Despite Honda ditching its innovative magic seats, the Civic is still full of practical touches. Despite being longer, lower and wider than the old Honda Civic, the latest generation car gains little in the way of practicality. As is the Japanese way, the new Civic is crammed full of practical touches, while a big boot and wide opening make it enormously practical day-to-day. -day. There's only one body steel available to UK buyers, even though us buyers also get a choice of coupe and saloon variations. Bosses have already confirmed that the Europe-only Civic Tourer estate will not be replaced, meaning those after outright space will need to look elsewhere. All cars come with five seats, including ISO fix points in the back. Inside there's room for five, as well as plenty of places to store your odds and ends. There's a decent glove box, a bend between the front seats and sizable door pockets. The slim side retracting parcel shelf is a novel idea and can be removed easily and stored under the boot floor. Cable clips ahead of the gear lever give you somewhere to tidy your wires when charging your phone or SAT NAV. Leg room, headroom and passenger space. Space inside the Honda Civic is good. There's loads of knee room in the back, and while taller adults may struggle slightly for headroom, getting comfortable shouldn't be a problem for most. Honda has done away with the previous generation car's innovative magic seats, allowing engineers to move the fuel tank and lower the front seat hip point. This means both the driver and front seat passenger sit lower than before offering a sportier and more engaging driving position. There's loads of adjustment in the steering wheel, too. Boot The Honda Civic's 478-liter boot is actually one liter bigger than before, meaning the family hatch remains one of the most practical cars in this class. 
Handy features such as the slimline parcel shelf that retracts sideways to save space are a boon, too. Unfortunately, overall boot space is slightly smaller than the outgoing car though it's still plenty big enough for the occasional trip to the tip. The sloping roofline may pose more of a problem than outright space, however. Where a VW Golf gets a flatter rear end, the Civic's sporty design might prove troublesome when it comes to loading big, square boxes. Bosses have also confirmed that the Civic Tourer estate will not be replaced so those seeking ultimate practicality will have to look at rivals like the Peugeot 308 SW. Reliability and Safety 4.7 Star The old Civic had a solid reliability record, and the new model comes loaded to the rafters with safety kit. Even six years after going on sale, the old Honda Civic still managed a respectable 40th place in our annual driver power survey. As a manufacturer, Honda's overall 20th place finish in 2016 wasn't quite as good, but that still put it ahead of Audi, VW, Ford, and Nissan. With all the safety kit on board the new Civic, bosses are hoping for a full 5-star Euro NCAP safety rating. The brand's sensing safety systems are standard across the range, meaning all cars get lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control and rear cross-traffic assist. Warranty All new Hondas come with a 3-year slash 90 comma 000 mile warranty, which is about on PAR with rival manufacturers. Hyundai and Toyota do offer 5-year guarantees, however, while Kia pips the lot with seven years of peace of mind. Civic buyers can extend their warranty for an additional cost. Servicing Honda dealers offer a fixed price service package for the Civic costing from £195. That's for only one service, however, with additional check UPS costing £265 and £245 respectively. A seat Leon's first service is £16 cheaper, for example.